Hi there, my name is Stephanie and welcome to another Disney video on my channel, House of Paper Doll. This one is all about Disney's Art of Animation Resort at Walt Disney World in Florida. I'm going to be giving you my overview, review and a big guide with hopefully lots of helpful tips. So Art of Animation is inspired by Disney Pixar movies with films like The Lion King, Finding Nemo, Cars and The Little Mermaid. So we enjoyed a week long stay in one of the Finding Nemo family suites here and also a couple of nights stay in the Little Mermaid room. So if you are thinking of staying at Disney's Art of Animation Resort or you have just booked, then here is everything you need to know about the resort. So Disney divides their resorts into three categories. You've got Deluxe, Moderate and Value. Art of Animation comes in the Value Resort category which often means that it's a lower price point. Categories are also defined by amenities as well. Saying that though, the suites here are not in the value pricing category, which I'll be talking more about just now. Staying on site, you definitely get to stay in the Disney bubble as well as having lots of perks that come with staying on property. Resort layout. So I'm gonna start with just how the resort is laid out. Do you have my trusty map here as well? So the main block at Art of Animation is Animation Hall. This will be the first thing you see as you pull up into the resort. It's a big building and within this block you have quite a lot of your sort of main amenities. There is the food court here, you've got reception or front desk, there's also a shop, you have guest services, there's an ATM, a games room, mail drop off, airline check-in if you're US, currency exchange, and there's a DVC center as well. Just outside Animation Hall, you'll also find the bus stops, which is where the Disney transportation buses will take you to the Disney parks. So the resort is then separated into four themed areas. You have Cars, Finding Nemo, The Lion King and The Little Mermaid. Each section represents and recreates each respective Disney movie from the big statues to the smallest detailing. The so first tip is if you are wanting to stay in a specific themed area then make sure that you book your themed area at the time of booking. So if you're booking say for example directly with Disney it will give you an option on the Walt Disney World website, you actually have to click on which one you want to book. So the resort rooms are basically split into two sections. You have the family suites and just like the regular hotel sort of style rooms. The family suites will be in the Cars, Finding Nemo and Lion King section. They don't have any regular hotel rooms. These are all family suites in those sections. And the Little Mermaid section is where you will find your sort of typical hotel slash motel style rooms. There are no family suites in the Little Mermaid section. As you're in Animation Hall, to the right of that is where the cars section is. Out of Animation Hall, directly in front of you, you will find the Finding Nemo section. And then to the left of Finding Nemo is the Lion King section. And then through the Lion King section, you will then find the Little Mermaid section, which is basically right at the end of the resort area. So let's look a little bit about the theme sections. I'm gonna start with cars. So this section was personally my favorite section. The theming here is incredible. You really do feel like you're walking through Radiator Springs and this area certainly wouldn't look out of place in the Disney Hollywood Studios. Yet yeah, here it is at the resort with all the favorites from cars, including Lightning McQueen, you've got Mater, plus some rarer scene cars that you won't find in the Orlando Disney parks. There's so many photo opportunities here for any cars fan. The cars themselves, they don't move or talk, but the cars soundtrack is pumped out as you're walking around this themed area which really does set the tone to perfection. The pool here has cone-shaped private cabanas available and these are free on a first-come, first-served basis. Has to be one of the coolest pools that we've seen for sure. A tip, even if you are not staying in the cars section, be sure to visit this area at night because personally I think this area comes alive at night and it's so amazing to walk around Radiator Springs as the cars light up. It's what's Finding Nemo. So this was the section that we stayed in because this is our kids' favorite. And this is such a bright, fun, colorful area. It's also the area that's the most easily accessible for the resort amenities for Animation Hall. And it's all centered around the big blue pool. Here you'll find statues of your favorite Nemo favorites such as Nemo, Dory, and Crush. There is also a little mini playground here and there is also a splash pool to keep the little ones entertained and a huge welcome on a hot Florida day. 
For the adults, you will find the drop-off pool bar here too. Another tip, don't forget to look up at the seagulls because they may just have something to say. If you're wanting to stay in the Finding Nemo area but you are maybe a little worried that it might be quite noisy because I would say this is definitely the noisier section of the resort, then my advice would be to book a room on one of the higher floors. I think we stayed on the fourth floor and we were overlooking the pool but it was a really quiet room. So if you're worried about sound, my advice would be to book a room or request a room on a high floor. Now for the Lion King, full of lush green foliage. I really love how the landscapes of Autumn Animation Resort changes to complement each theme. From the grass to the flowers, the detailing here is just incredible. And I think especially in the Lion King section, here you will have some great photo opportunities in front of the Lion King favorites like Simba, Timon, Pumba. Plus there's a few hyenas and scar. The music will transport you to the African Pride Land and remain fixed in your head. There is also a mini playground here for the children. And finally, the Little Mermaid section. This is the furthest section from the main amenities, but for any Little Mermaid fan, it is totally adorable. This area felt very similar in style to the Disney All Star Movies Resort. The way the rooms are laid out and positioned, quite like a motel style. The rooms here are the least expensive. There's also a third resort pool right here under the watchful eye of a giant Urchula, King Triton and of course Ariel herself. It's a really fun and colourful section and our kids just loved this area. There's also loads of photo spots in this area as well. So let's have a peek inside the rooms. I'm gonna start with the family suites first. So just to recap, the family suites, you'll find them in Cars, Finding Nemo and The Lion King. Each of these three sections has the same room slash suite layout where the decoration just varying according to the theme. Each suite will sleep up to six people and there have two bathrooms, which is a big bonus. One has a shower and the other one has a bath with just a, like a shower overhead. There is a separate bedroom with a queen size bed. That bedroom has its own TV and that bedroom has the ensuite shower bathroom. Suite provides a lounge living space area with a pull-out double sofa bed. There's also a cool relaxing chair and a TV unit. Kitchenette area comprising of microwave, coffee machine, sink, and mini fridge. There is also a dining area as you walk into the suite, which has a table with four chairs. This table is actually a Murphy bed, so you just pull it down to become a double bed. It was really easy and light to do, so don't worry about it being difficult or heavy. It was just really simple to pull down and really easy to put back up again. Our children actually slept on the Murphy bed underneath Finding Nemo and his dad, which is just adorable. 
but then through the day especially for like breakfast first thing in the morning we just push the Murphy bed back up and there we had the table ready to use. There's small hanging space in the living room for clothes and another small hanging space in the bedroom for clothes. So let's have a look inside the little mermaid's rooms. As mentioned these are the like the Disney value rooms really. They are much smaller in size and just bearing in mind because these are the furthest away from the main reception, food courts and transportation it's just something to consider with small kids, especially if you don't take a stroller or pushchair. It can be quite a walk to the reception from the Little Mermaid area in the morning and probably even more so in the evenings after a long day in the parks. You do have to walk past part of the Finding Nemo section and through the Lion King section to get to the Little Mermaid section. However, if you are using your own car, there is a car park right by the King Triton block of this area. These rooms all have external doors, so like I said, they're a bit more like a motel style and very similar to the all-star Disney resorts. So when you walk out of your room, you will walk straight outside. There is no internal corridors, but they do have elevators on each block. I personally think that the Little Mermaid section is a great choice to experience that all of Art of Animation has to offer without paying the higher price point of a family suite. The rooms inside consist of one main room with two double beds. So there's no queen beds, they're just double beds. And there's one separate bathroom. TV unit with a mini fridge and a small sort of circular table with two chairs. My advice if you are staying in the Little Mermaid section, so if walking is a little bit of an issue, then I would personally recommend requesting a ground floor room, either in the Ursula or King Triton block and the section of that that is closest to the Lion King part. The Ursula block either overlooks the pool or on the other side it overlooks um, Hourglass Lake, so you will be overlooking the Skyliner, which is what we we were overlooking the lake and we could see that the Skyliner is being built. And just to note that all rooms are out of animation, whether you're staying in a suite or you're staying in one of the Little Mermaid regular rooms, they all will provide you with an in-room safe. There's hairdryer, there's iron, there's ironing board, and also Disney toiletries. So, pricing. So as mentioned, this resort is classed as a value resort, which normally means the rooms and amenities are reflective of this, but as I've sort of said a few times already, the family suites are not value pricing at all. I know when we booked it, we could have stayed in some of the moderate resorts for actually quite a bit less money, and even one of the deluxe resorts wasn't that much difference in price. However, for us, uh, we prefer to have that separate bedroom, the lounge, kitchenette area. For us, having access to that much more space made us feel that it was sort of better value in that respect to pay for a suite. The family suites are generous and spacious and they are a great option if members of your party want a little bit more privacy because you can close the bedroom door. Equally, this is what worked best for us because we had young children and once they were asleep at night, 
we still had quite a bit of space to move around in, unwind, watching some TV, but that was all being in one big room and trying to keep quiet not to wake anyone. So for us, the separate extra spaces compared to one big sort of room made it work well for us to both. Resort pools. There are three pools throughout the resort. So regardless of which area you are staying, you can use any of the three pools. Saying that though, it would be quite a walk from the Little Mermaid to the Cars pool and vice versa. So the three pools as mentioned, they are situated in the Little Mermaid section, Finding Nemo section, and what we found to be the quietest pool in the car section. All the pools are gated, so you will need your magic bands to be able to enter them. Each pool also provides pool towels, which was really handy. They are all actively lifeguarded as well during pool hours, and I have to say we noticed just how on top of stuff the lifeguards were. There's also plenty of sun lounges around the pools too. So let's start with the big blue pool. The big blue pool is pretty incredible. It's the largest Disney resort pool, and it's themed around Finding Nemo, which will be no surprise then that it's found in the Finding Nemo section. This was by far the busiest pool at the resort. And that's I think mainly down to its location because it's just by the animation hall. There are underwater speakers, so you can listen out for some music, I think some of the characters talking. Plus there's a splash zone for the kids. There is also a pool bar here, which neither of the other two pools have. Fin flipping pool. <laughs> Located in the Little Mermaid section, it's a decent sized pool and you're surrounded by all things Ariel and friends. The Crazy Colon Pool. This one is located in the Cars section and as we mentioned, this one seemed to be the quietest. It is a great pool by itself. There are several cone shaped cabana huts and they are available for free just on a first come, first served basis. These might be very welcome in the summer months for sure if you can grab one in the morning. On to the resort amenities and information. The food court. So the food court is called Landscape of Flavors. I personally think the Art of Animation has an incredible food court. We were really pleasantly surprised by the food offerings. It's not all just pizza and burgers, which we were very happy about. So whilst there is a pizza section, and the pizza section got a big thumbs up from us, um, your standard chicken nugget, burgers, including a plant-based burger, french fries, etc. They're all available, but it was so great to see other options too, such as build your own salad, build your own pasta, or fish dishes, and some Asian offerings too. I would highly recommend the Mongolian grilled fish and also the Asian chicken bowl. They were delicious and actually quite a lot better than some of the Disney Park restaurants we ate in. For breakfast, there is also French toast shop and you can create your own omelette. In terms of kids' menus, our children really loved food here and the kids' menus had a really good variety with some healthy options. Don't forget there is a bakery section for all those adorable and delicious Disney cupcakes, although some of them almost look too good to eat. Plus there are many grab and go type food fridges offering items like sandwiches, fruit, cereals, pre-made salads, pre-made snacks, etc. So that's just a great way if you are just heading out to the parks and you just want to grab something, then just head for the fridges. Drink stations, there are three drink station areas for you to fill your drinks with water, sodas and ice. Some of them had hot drinks too. If you have a resort refillable mug, this is where you can go back to and refill your mug. <laughs> Takeout and seating, you can request to take out your food and take it back to your room to eat, which we did quite a few nights. And this works great, I think, if you are in the family suites in particular, because they come with a dining table. So sometimes for us it was just easier when we arrived back from the parks, grabbed the food that we wanted to have for dinner and then we just headed back straight to our room, put your PJs on and get comfy, have dinner and just relax. I would say if you're staying in the Little Mermaid section it might just be easier to just eat the food in the dining court. We found there to be plenty of seating available though, even at busy times. There is also a little area just outside the food court with tables and chairs so if you want to eat outside you can do and that is overlooking the big blue pool. Disney dining plan. So we were on the Disney dining plan so if you are doing the Disney dining plan there is a board up that tells you sort of how it works really and what you're entitled to. It does give you like a main meal, a 
for dinners anyway, we've got a main meal and an alcoholic beverage was included. You can pick up like little small cups of wine from the fridges and they are included in the designated dining plan. The kids came with snacks and drinks too. As this is a value resort, there is no table service restaurant here. It is just the food court area shopping, which we all like to do. So the shop here is called Ink and Paint Shop. Tons of Disney merchandise, of course, a vast variety of Disney and Disney Park merchandise, toys, stationery, you can pick up some Disney ears, loads of Disney pins if you are a Disney pin collector, as well as some artwork and a sort of select offering of clothing. A lot more in the Disney parks in terms of clothing, but they did have a little selection. There are some art of animation resort, little merchandise area too. It's very small, but there is a little section there. You can also pick up packaged snacks within this shop. So it saves you having to go to the food court if you're just wanting to grab like a little snack. You can also use a Disney dining plan, snack credits here. The snacks that are um, applicable will have the little Disney dining plan sign or symbol by them. Also, if you forget anything or you run out, basic travel and toiletry essentials you can pick up here as well, such as diapers, slash nappies, um, kids' polyps, toothpaste, wipes, basic medication, I think they have like paracetamol, allergy relief, headache tablets, things like that you can pick up there. So the shop location is just after the reception and just before the food court. It's sort of like the walk area almost in between the two. Also, if you are using the Disney transportation, the buses do drop you off um, after a day in the park for you to exit through the gift shop in Disney style. <laughs> so you will walk through the shop more than likely once you get off the buses. Check in, check out. Check in time is 3 o'clock and check out time is 11. I am not sure that Disney offers a late checkout service. Our room was ready just before 3, but I know a lot of people are saying that recently they're finding that Disney doesn't often have their rooms ready even for 3 o'clock. You can check in online using your My Disney app experience. Um, we did this and it's a great way of bypassing the reception area. If you have magic bands already, so that's normally if you live in the US, you will be sent your magic bands in advance. And if you check in online, then you'll just get a text on your phone to tell you that your room's ready. And basically you bypass reception and just go straight to your room. Your bands will open your room door. If you're from outside the US, then you will still have to pick up your magic bands at the reception. We still checked in online and then we just picked up our magic bands at the reception. I have to say we did find the reception to be really quite busy at this resort out of all the resorts we went to this was by far the busiest reception area and the queues were quite long from about 10 o'clock in the morning especially around checkout and check-in time if you've got a question that you need to ask then or you're looking to check out allow plenty of time because you could be in the queue for quite a while there is a little area with a tv for the kids so you can definitely keep them entertained whilst you're waiting but that is just something to bear in mind that reception was always busy and i I actually found them to be quite slow at this resort as well. Also another tip when you are checking in, especially if you are from outside the US, is to ask them to just double check that your magic bands work. We, as I said, we checked in online then queued up to collect our magic bands and then when we went to our room when it was ready, the magic bands didn't work. So it's a little frustrating that one of you then had to go back queue up again to sort out the magic bands and I think our magic bands hadn't even been properly activated so yeah just ask them to double check that the magic bands have been activated and will open your room before you leave the reception. Also another tip is when you're checking in ask them what you need to do to check out because if you have a card on file don't necessarily have to queue up to check out. We didn't know this and we queued up to check out and almost missed a dining reservation at Ohana's actually and when we got to the front of the queue it was kind of a bit frustrating to find out that actually we hadn't needed to have queued up to check out because we had a card on file if there's anything oh and they just take it off that so I would just confirm with them what you need to do for checkout just to save you time having to queue up at checkout when you don't necessarily need to. Loading bay so as you arrive or drive into Disney's Art of Animation you will see one of the first things you see is the loading bay area so it's like a covered area 
This is also where if you are arriving on the Disney Magical Express, you will get dropped off. There is a little parking bay there that you can pull up and unload your luggage or likewise load your luggage without having to park in the car park and carry everything in. Each car park section also had their own little loading bay as well. Bag drop off. So if you arrive at the resort and your room is not ready but you want to basically dump your bags and head off to the parks, you can do. There is a bell service area and that is located right at the entrance of Art of Animation Hall or Animation Hall. Where the loading bay is, as you get out of your car, you'll just see it there before the automatic doors are into the reception. And likewise, for checkout you can leave your bags and suitcases there go off to soak up the last few hours in the parks and then come back and pick up your luggage before you head off to the airport or, or home we noticed that bell services was always busy so if you have a flight to catch make sure you allow plenty of time to potentially have to queue to pick up your luggage when you get back to the resort just so you don't miss your flight service your way so you can actually receive a gift card by opting out of housekeeping. This is something that's applicable now to, I think most or not all Disney moderate and value resorts. I don't think you can do this in the deluxe resorts, but certainly the moderate and value resorts you can. And obviously auto animation is included in this. We did this. So when you check in or shortly after you've checked in, if you opt out of housekeeping, then you can be given a gift card, which works out currently at $10 per day. They do subtract a $10 amount out of your total. So for example, if you are staying three nights at the resort, then you would receive a $20 gift card if you are staying seven nights at the resort you would receive a $60 gift card and you can then spend that gift card on Disney merchandise or in the parks. It can be a nice way of just saving a bit of money or at least getting a bit of money back. The credit voucher gets emailed to you and it has a barcode on and you just show that when you're purchasing your merchandise. We bought something I think in Magic Kingdom, we just showed my phone to the cashier. She just scanned it and it took off. It was just like $60 which definitely helped. So if you do opt out of housekeeping but you still want fresh towels or some coffee sat sachets or some toiletries then just call housekeeping from your in-room phone and they will deliver it for you. You can also request clean bedding but they wouldn't put that on because you've opted out of housekeeping so you would need to make the bed or change the sheets if you want to clean sheets through your stay. A few more amenities within the animation block. One is the games room slash arcade. Now this isn't something that we went in but it was quite busy and it seemed a really decent arcade game area. Disney illustration lessons. So this is something that our kids did and they absolutely loved and it's I think quite a nice touch for our event animation is you are able to take free drawing classes with a Disney animator. The lessons run daily in the lobby area. It's in the little area where the TV is where the kids often wait where for checking in. There's a few seats around there as well. So that's where they hold it or that's where they held it when we were there. So they usually run three times a day, 10 a.m., 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Obviously times are subject to change so just double check before you take a class. Our children who are aged seven and four both loved it, especially our seven-year-old. There were kids of all ages at the class that we attended, plus a number of adults took the class as well. Each lesson, you'll learn how to draw a popular Disney character. When our children attended, they learned how to draw Simba from The Lion King. I sat with them and I didn't participate, but I kind of wish I had now because it was a lot of fun and it was just a really nice experience too. Movies at night. So as with a lot of the Disney resorts, if not all the Disney resorts, they do show movies at night under the stars. At Art of Animation, the movie is held around Big Boo Pool, which is in the Finding Nemo section. So there'll be a, move, a different movie playing each night, which you are just welcome to watch. When we were there, they turned the sun lounges around so people could lie back and watch the movie under the stars. There will be a schedule up of what Disney movies will be playing which nights. I think when we were there, they had some oldies like Oliver and Company and Hercules. And then obviously at Art of Animation, you're gonna get Little Mermaid. Find me more blanking cars, but they do rotate. Laundry. So even though you're on holiday, vacation, escaping the laundry, unfortunately, is not something that happens. Each section of the resort 
has its own laundry facilities. So don't worry about having to drag your laundry across the resort. I did use laundry, I think I used the facilities three times during the, our stay, twice in the Finding Nemo section and once in the Little Mermaid section. I have to say, I found the laundry facilities really, really good, like really easy to use and we're fine. I did find around meal times, especially like dinner time, they tended to be a lot busier and also sort of around 10 o'clock in the morning, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, they were also quite busy too. Ours had about six washing machines and I think it was 10 tumble dryers available. So the facilities themselves were actually pretty simple and easy to use. You just need a debit or credit card, which you will swipe to actually use the machines. You It's like in a little electronic pad on the wall and you swipe your card there and then you'll press which washing machine or tumble dryer you wanna use. And then you can go up to the actual machine and you can choose what type of wash you want. For example, delicate. The dryers tended to run for 60 minutes. So that's just something to bear in mind is 60 minutes. And they shrink some clothing. The cost was $3 per load per machine. There is also detergents and fabric softener available to purchase within the actual laundry room itself, like detergent vending machine. And I think that was like a dollar per single use packet. I think you can also pick up some detergent from the Disney shop in the resort as well. Disney does also provide a dry cleaning and valet laundry service. Again, I would just contact housekeeping for more information or to book them. Refillable mugs. So if you are participating in the Disney dining plan, then you get given a refillable mug included. When we went, there was only one design, but different colored like tops. These were great, I have to say. And if we weren't doing the Disney dining plan, but we were staying for quite a few nights, I would definitely consider purchasing the resort mugs because it was great just to keep going and refilling water. We're not big soda people, but we just kept refilling ours with water. Handy if you don't have a car and you can't get to like a Walmart or a Target to pick up bottled water. Also handy if you like your soda and also saves you money from buying water or using water as like your snack credits or anything like that. Your refillable mugs won't unfortunately work in the parks, they are just for the resort but you can go and grab your morning coffee or some tea. So Disney transportation and parking. So one of the perks of staying at a Disney resort is the Disney transportation. An Art of Animation does have its own dedicated bus service to the Disney parks and to Disney Springs. Some resorts do share buses, which can make it a bit harder and longer to use the bus service. So Art of Animation, at least you know when the bus arrives in the morning, it won't be full. Although you may still have to queue at park opening times, higher volume seasons, and we definitely found that at park opening times or just before park opening time, it was quite a queue. So allow yourself plenty of time. We got caught out quite a few times with the buses not arriving for quite a while, 40 minutes. We actually waited one morning. So well, for us, Disney transportation, it kind of proved to be a bit hit or miss, to be quite honest, but it is nice to have that option there. If you have push chairs, then you more than likely have to collect them to get on the buses because they do pack you in, especially on your return journey if you're leaving the park closing, the crown it's like being back in London. They cram everyone onto the buses. The Disney Skyliner. So this is a new transportation system which is currently being built. I think it's due to open in 2019 or 2020 at some point over the next 12 months. And this is gonna make a huge difference for Art of Animation and Pop Century. The Skyliner station will be on the bridge that basically separates Art of Animation and Pop Century. So the bridge over Hourglass Lake. And it's gonna add such enormous value you to both these resorts because you can simply walk to the bridge, get on a gondola slash skyliner and go straight to Epcot or Hollywood Studio. Whether this will increase the prices of Pop Century or Art of Animation will remain to be seen but this is definitely going to be a huge perk when it opens. Parking and charges. Each themed area does have its own car park so if you are taking your own car you can park in the car section. If you're staying in the car section the main Main car park will be for the Finding Nemo section. There's a car park section quite close to the Lion King one and then one right by the Little Mermaid section too. Disney now does charge for parking. As we were coming from the UK, we actually didn't get charged for parking. I think there's some kind of deal and I don't think we do until a date in 2020. But for most people and certainly for the US residents right now and eventually for the UK, Disney does or will be charging you for parking your car, which is pretty annoying to be quite honest. And it definitely will add up, especially if you are looking to stay for more than a few nights or if you're staying a week or two weeks 
it's certainly gonna add up. The charge is going to be, or currently is, $13 per night of your stay at the resort. This does give you free parking at the Disney parks, including the water parks. Um, Disney Springs is free to park at anyway. If you have a dining reservation at one of the other resorts, you can drive to the other resorts and park there for free. I think it's for a maximum of about three hours, which should give you plenty of time to eat and have a bit of a nosy round the resort as well. What was once considered a perk of staying at the Disney resorts has now been taken away, which is a real shame and just another way of Disney squeezing more money out of you, to be honest. Distance to the parks from the resort. The biggest advice that I can give is to always allow and give yourself plenty of time to get around Disney property. Disney is huge, especially if you're coming from the UK or Europe. Sizing is huge. You need to allow time for parking or buses potentially coming, not coming. Plus going through like bag searches, queuing for entrances before you even get into the park. So if you do have reservations booked, if you do have fast passes booked, I would definitely say to give yourself at least an hour from your resort to the park entrance. Much better to arrive early than to miss your reservation or miss your fast pass because of an unexpected delay or just underestimating the distance. Another thing to mention about Art of Animation is its close proximity to Pop Century Resort. Pop Century Resort is another Disney Valley resort and I would say for me personally, I think these are the two better Disney value resorts. Pop Century is also worth a, a good look round. We actually went across to Pop Century for lunch one day. I had lunch in their food court, which is actually also really good. And we just had a really lovely afternoon just walking around the resort. The theming at Pop Century is amazing as well. It's a really fun resort. And the only thing, as mentioned, that's separating the two resorts is a bridge, and it literally takes you less than five minutes to walk across it. Another tip is when you're leaving the parks at night, if the bus or out of animation, if the queue is looking ridiculously long, and you suddenly spot that the Pop Century queue is really short, and there's a Pop Century bus coming, Hop on the Pop Century bus, get the bus back to Pop Century and then just walk across the bridge to Art of Animation, save you time queuing at the parks in the evening. So overall I have to say we absolutely loved our stay at this resort and in particular our kids just loved theming. There is also so much of the resort to explore. It's such a bright, big, fun and colourful resort that brings a smile to your face from the rainbow reception to the illustrations and the artwork on the walls, to the incredible detailing, especially with the landscape. It feels like each themed area is almost like a little world of its own. You are definitely still in the Disney bubble. When you're staying here, there is no mistaking that, which may or may not be your thing or your preference. Compared to say Disney's Port Orleans Resort, which is still Disney, but it's more like subtle Disney. Art of Animation is Disney in more of a loud and proud way. If you're trying to decide which Disney Valley Resort to stay in, I personally do think the Art of Animation is the best Disney Valley Resort, with Pop Century being a close second. The fact that there are family suites here, fantastic pools, and an equally fantastic food court, plus very easy access to Pop Century. Add to that the new Disney Skyliner transportation system, I do think. This is a great family friendly resort and I wouldn't hesitate to stay here again. So I hope you found this art of animation guide, review, tips helpful. I would love to hear if you are staying at this resort or thinking of staying at this resort or have stayed at this resort. Also if you have any questions please just pop them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to reply. As always thank you so much for watching, there's plenty more Disney videos come. Also don't forget to check out my Disney playlist which is steadily growing. Thank you again and I shall see you soon on my next video. Bye!